Canvases can be purchased pre-assembled or in parts. Factory assembled are typically cheaper, but some artists like to stretch their own canvas, either because they need an odd size or want their art to be entirely original. There are three types of fiber to paint on, canvas, linen, and cotton. Each can be purchased by the yard, either as a roll or pre-cut. They come in three standard colors, cream, oatmeal, and white, but colors vary depending on the specific material. The noticeable difference among them is their elasticity and thickness. Cotton is the easiest to pull, but has the thinnest weight and tears easily. Linen is a little more rigid, yet is still easy to stretch and won't tear as easy. Canvas is the most coarse of the fibers and takes the most strength to stretch. This will all determine the type of bounce your brush will have on the surface. The type of fiber you choose will also determine the type of primer you apply to the surface. Primer is a material that seals the surface, helps prevent erosion from paint and chemicals over time, and helps paint stay truer to its factory made color. There are two types of primer. Gesso is a pure white ground. It is not like white acrylic or oil paint because it does not have a blue hue and is specifically meant to promote the adhesion of paint to a surface by providing a textural tooth for the paint to rest on. Gesso can be applied to any fiber. The other type of primer is rabbit skin glue, which is purchased in granulated form and then mixed and heated to create a liquid. The glue is best used with linen and cotton fiber because it can soak into the surface and create a drum-like quality. If you choose to use rabbit skin glue, it's best to set it up at least an hour before you need to use it. You'll also require a hot plate and some water. Typically, a solution of 1 ounce cup granules with 12 ounces water will cover two 18 by 26 inch canvases. Excess glue can be stored in a refrigerator afterwards and then reheated. You don't need to sand the surface of the fiber after because rabbit skin glue is fairly thin and doesn't get opaque the way gesso does. It's meant to provide a bit more even texture than gesso would to a surface because it soaks into the individual fiber particles while also preserving the color of the fiber underneath. The canvas itself is comprised of a wooden frame of interlocking stretcher bars. These pieces of wood are sold separately in varying sizes, thicknesses, and durability. The better types will have a rounded bevel to the forward facing side of the bar so that the overlaid canvas will not rip on a sharp edge during construction or over time from wear. When you begin, make sure the bevel side of each bar is facing either towards or away from you. Then, start joining bars together to form 90 degree right angles. It's okay if they're not perfect just yet. If you need to use a hammer, place something soft between the wood and the hammer so that you don't warp the surface, or else this may be visible through the canvas. Never strike the hammer on the corner edge where two bars meet, or else it will chip and make the canvas visibly wrinkle in that area. If one of the corner triangles breaks, you can glue it back in place afterwards, or get a replacement triangle. These are often in a bin next to the stretchers in any art store. Once all four pieces are together, make sure each side is level and perpendicular. You may need to tap a little to straighten it out. Sometimes stretcher bars may leave a slight gap between each other, even though the outside corners are joined and the overall canvas is level. This could be from the way it was cut or how you assembled it. You can always staple the corners to prevent any shifting later on. Next, lay your canvas fiber out on a table. I would suggest placing it so the groove of the creases faces down. It will make it easier to flatten out later on. Now, place your assembled stretcher bars 
bevel side down over the canvas and allow enough material to reach over the entire bar. It's better to have enough than too little because once you start stretching, the material will shift and you want to cover all your edges. Use a staple gun to firmly join the corners of each bar, then begin stapling the canvas. Start in the middle of one side and pull in a direction towards you, not off to one side. If you start to see the canvas fibers, make a diagonal instead of vertical line in the center of the frame, you know that you are uneven. Once you insert one staple on one side, place the next staple in the same spot on the opposite side. This will keep tension uniform throughout the whole process. Place staples about an inch to an inch and a half apart. Stop once you reach the inside of the frame. Do not go all the way to the outside edge. Repeat this process for the remaining two sides. You may need to go back and hammer any staples partially sticking out. Now you can trim any excess string. The process of folding the corners of your canvas is very important because it presents a professional look to your work. The top two corners should fold inward so that the top edge of the flap is closed and level with the top of the canvas. The bottom two corners should also fold inward, but the flap should be level and closed with the bottom of the canvas. A small triangle will appear as a result of the folding process. It's important to not have any wrinkles in the corners because it will distract from the art itself. Let's start in the upper left corner. Bring the excess to a triangular point off to the side and tuck the bottom along the angle of the stretcher bar joint. Slowly fold the triangle over and pull, keeping the bottom tucked on the angle of the joint and staple it in place. Now you'll see a second triangle. You may want to put another staple just beyond it to hold it in place before folding it up. If any wrinkles appear, you may need to use a flat screwdriver to tuck it in and keep the canvas as flat as possible. Finish the corner with a few more staples to hold the flap in place. For the upper right corner, I'm slightly modifying my method by tucking the excess into a square along the corner joint so that it makes two triangles. Next, I'll fold the top shape down so that the entire top flap of canvas runs to the right edge. Then I grab the tiny bit of surplus hanging over the edge and fold it up and over towards the left, all while tucking the other triangle underneath. Continue pulling to straighten out any creases, then staple it in place. Next, I'll work on the lower left corner. For me, I find it easier to rotate the canvas so the corner I'm working on is in the upper right. Again, I'm starting with a square with a diagonal line along the corner joint. Then I fold the top triangle down so the top flap of canvas runs to the far right edge and then staple. Now grab the tiny bit of surplus from the edge and fold it up and over towards the left while you pull. Straighten out any creases and then staple. Finish the remaining corner, then flip over. The canvas tension should be fairly tight like a drum. Remember to check the direction of your corner folds for accuracy. Now it's time to prime the surface. If you choose to use gesso, apply a generous amount in one direction all around, including the sides, making sure to keep strokes even. Let this first coat dry and then sand in the opposite direction to which you applied the gesso. 
This will keep the surface relatively flat and smooth. Usually the surface will seize or rise slightly afterwards, so a second coat is necessary for consistency. Apply this in the opposite direction of the initial coat of gesso. Let dry, and then sand again in the opposite direction. Remember to include a little gesso on the back, just so the canvas is not visible from any angle on a wall. When it's finally primed and dry, write the word top with an arrow in the upper right corner on both the back of the canvas as well as stretcher bar. Don't forget your name too on the bottom. Remember that gesso works on any of the fibers, but rabbit skin glue is best on linen. Start heating it at least an hour before needed. When it's ready, apply a generous amount in one direction all around, including the sides. Since it's very thin and absorbs into the surface easily, you may need to also apply some on the reverse side of the front panel for consistency. You can immediately apply more in the opposite direction once you're covered. No sanding is necessary between coats because it doesn't build up on the surface the way gesso does. Also, rabbit glue is meant to have a little bit of texture.